Okay, welcome back. Now the demo that I'm going to do, I'm going to illustrate this concept of coefficient of restitution. The coefficient of restitution, we can read a little uh, about it in the Wikipedia, learn a little bit about it. It's defined as the relative velocity of a ball or some other object upon collision with another object. So the velocity after collision divided by the velocity before collision. So to do a ex simple experiment, you can just take a ball of a certain material drop it on another object like a table or the ground and uh, determine the velocity just before collision, V initial, and then the velocity after collision, V final. So if you take the ratio of the V final after collision with the ground, divide that by the velocity before the collision, you get the coefficient of restitution. So of course the, the coefficient of restitution is going to be a unitless number. Right? And it's generally going to be between 0 and 1. Right? Coefficient of restitution less or the same as 1, greater or same as 0. So what would happen if the coefficient of restitution is 0? What would that mean? The velocity after the collision would be 0. So imagine you drop a ball and pretty much just stand still. Right? Just goes, boom, all of the energy of the ball goes into the elastic deformation of the ball and heat and sound and it doesn't uh, move at all. So that would be a ball where the coefficient of restitution would be zero. Usually the coefficient of restitution will depend on the properties of the ball itself and also the table or the ground, whatever surface you are dropping them on, right? So this would be coefficient of restitution zero. Now if the coefficient of restitution is one, what would that be? Well, the ball would come, bounce back with the same velocity, and it would go all the way to the same height. The final height will be the same as the initial height. So if the two heights are the same, that means the ball is a, experiences a perfectly elastic collision upon colliding with the ground, right? And the coefficient of restitution would be one, but that's kind of rare to find. Now on Wikipedia, it says that you could even find some objects that have coefficient of restitution less than zero and greater than one. So what would that be? The coefficient of restitution greater than one, coefficient of restitution less than zero. So it says coefficient of restitution greater than one. This would represent a collision in which energy is released, it says. For example, nitrocellulose billiard balls can literally explode at the point of impact. Also, some recent articles have described super elastic collisions in which it is argued that the coefficient of restitution can take a value greater than one. So basically, it would be a certain ball, some material that has elastic energy in it, that when upon colliding with the ground, it actually releases that energy and it goes farther up, right? So it's going to go farther up than the initial height. So that's going to be, goes higher up. Okay, what would it mean coefficient of restitution less than zero? So it says coefficient of restitution less than zero is would be represent a collision in which the separation velocity of the objects has the same direction as the closing velocity, implying that the objects pass through one another without fully engaging. This may also be thought of as an incomplete transfer of momentum. An example of this might be a small, dense object passing through a large, less dense one, you see. Imagine this is a very dense ball, and this is a cotton, right? It's coming and bouncing through cotton, and, it, and it's actually going through the cotton, right? But it's slowing down as it goes through the cotton, see? So instead of bouncing back, it's literally going through the cotton, so it says, Mm, it's a small dense object passing through a large dense one. For example, a bullet passing through a target, a motorcycle passing through a motor home, or a wave tearing through a dam. So imagine a wave coming, hitting a dam, and instead of bouncing back, it's going through the dam. That would be a case of coefficient of restitution less than zero. So you can kind of see the idea, right? So we have different balls here that I've brought, right? So we can see here, I'm going to bounce it on the table, and of course it doesn't go to the same height, right? So of course it depends also how new the ball is, depends on the material of the ball, it depends what surface you're dropping it on, right? So if I drop it on the, this table, 
versus the surface of this table and that table are different, so it, it bounces higher from this table. But if I try to bounce it from this one, you see the, the aluminum uh, cart. This is an actual cart that we use for our equipments. It kind of absorbs a lot of the energy. So you can see definitely it depends on the bowl itself and of the other materials. So you cannot say the, uh, that the certain bowl has a certain coefficient of restitution. Okay, so you can see here we can try a different ping pong ball. Drop them from the same height. You can see the ping pong has a larger height, right? You can look at this. You can do this. See this one, it goes up pretty high. This has also impact on sports. Uh, it says here, the USGA, the American governing golfing body, has started testing drivers for their golf, and their, their drivers, when the driver hits the golf ball, they have set the upper limit of 0.83 for their coefficient of restitution, 0.83. So it says, for the tennis racket, the tennis institution has said that the coefficient of restitution used for their rackets should be 0.85. So you see it's around 0 0.83, 0 0.85. It says eliminating the variables of string tension and frame stiffness, okay? The, internal, uh, the International Table Tennis Federation specifies that the ball in the ping pong ball shall bounce up 24 to 26 centimeters when dropped from a height of 30 centimeters, you see? So they're saying if you drop it from 30, right? It should be able to jump, go up to 26 and then you know that the ball is good. So it says the coefficient of restitution for a ping pong ball needs to be between 0.89 to 0.92. So you see, the, the golf ball was 0.83, the tennis ball was 0.85, the ping pong ball was 0.89 to 0.92. So it's higher, you see. And then it says for basketball, it should be between 0.81 to 0.85. So you don't want the basketball when you're dribbling necessarily to go up to the same height because you're actually exerting force when you're dribbling if it went, if it went as if it had a high coefficient of restitution it would go up too much and it would be carrying right so the ball would bounce up too high so you don't want the ball pumped up too much you want the coefficient of restitution to be a little bit lower so it kind of makes sense that basketball is saying 0.81 to 0.85 it's a little bit lower so how would we test this Instead of doing the velocity after collision divided by the velocity before collision, we can base it on the heights. It's easier, right? So how does the velocity depend on the height? So we can say the velocity is proportional to the kinetic energy. The velocity after the collision is proportional to the kinetic energy that it has right after the collision square root of the kinetic energy, and the velocity before the collision is proportional to the square root of the, the initial kinetic energy, right, that it had just before it collided with the ground. And then the kinetic energy that it has here is proportional to the initial potential energy, right? So we can say here this is square root of the mgh final over mgh initial, so it's just going to be square root of h final over h initial. So let's do an experiment. Determine the, the ping pong ball. So drop it from, uh, let's say, 50 centimeters. Okay, it's going up to about 40. So let's do that again. It's going up to here. So it's starting with 50, and it's going to 40. 0.89. Would, the, would that be uh, used, would that be able to be used in a professional game? Well, it said the ping pong ball needs to be between 0 0.89 to 0 0.92. So this is good. So now we can have a good game of ping pong right now, set up the table and have a competition, right? Uh, now let's try the tennis ball, okay? The tennis ball, drop it from 50. Okay, it went to 30, went to about here, yeah. Here my result was 0.89. So the uh, tennis balls need to be around 0.85.
0.85 is the mark that we're trying to shoot for. So we wouldn't want to be using this tennis ball for a game right now. And you can even tell by feeling it, it's uh, pretty old, okay, it's used. Okay, how about this one now? The rubber ball, okay? Drop it from 50. So it's going to 25. Okay, so now let's do the racquetball here. I have an old racquetball. It's going up to 30. So seven, that's also probably not good for a racquetball. It needs to be a stronger, a, a bigger coefficient of restitution. Okay, how about balls like this? Okay, this one is a black marble ball, black colored marble ball. So drop it from 50. This one is about 28. It's a little bit more than the 25 and a little bit less than the 30. So 28. So black ball, this is marble. So uh, square root of 28 over 50. That'd be 0.75, coefficient of restitution. Then I have the same similar material here, but white. A white marble ball. This one is a little bit less. Okay, so this is about 25. Uh, okay, it's similar to the rubber ball, okay? So white marble ball, so that would be 0.71. So those, so far the rubber ball and the white marble ball, these two were about even, okay? The, uh, the, this rubber, big rubber ball and the white marble ball. Okay, and then I've got here uh, steel balls. These two balls are pretty much the same material, two steel balls, okay? But they're different size. Let's see if the size makes a difference. So we can write down here, a uh, big steel ball and small steel ball. Okay, so we drop it from 50. which is going to be square root of 0.3, so that's 0.55, okay, and then the small one, the small one is this one, that's going to be a little bit bigger. So just from that simple experiment, it looks like if it's smaller, it's likely to bounce up higher if it's the same material. I believe I have another steel ball here, even smaller than that, this one here. See, so similar material, this one is smaller. So if we do a progression and do this many, many times, we can say, oh, okay, uh, the, not only is it material dependent, but it's also size dependent. You see, so if I can drop it from 50, this one is going to, about 21, 22. This is 0.66. So you can see a progression there, you see? So the smaller object, the more the coefficient of restitution, it keeps its uh, kinetic and potential energy, whereas the large ones tend to lose it, right? Um, then I have these two balls. These are more bouncy balls, okay? Let's, we can test this out. Let's test the, the green. The green is kind of fun. It's one of those that the kids play with. If I drop it from 50, you see that? That's pretty high.
It goes till about, goes till about 42. So the coefficient of restitution of that one is really, really high. So you can see here how to experiment with different balls, and you could even find a ball that goes up higher than the initial height that you threw it from, and then the coefficient of restitution will be greater than one, okay? Thank you very much.